Hello. So there's been a bunch of questions on is Cheeto Say actually worth it in backline? So the first thing you need to know about that is Cheeto Say is not going to be worth it in backline if it's not mono light. I just want to put that out there before you start watching the entire video and then realize that later on. So position wise, I would put her center back and not on either of the sides as she's not built for damage resistance. Uh, none of her skills are going to allow her to have that. And she has some really nice penetration skills. So you actually prefer that if she's going to take damage, it's going to be penetrating. Or trying to steal irrelevantly, they're both great. Now, one of the things you're going to realize is right now, she possesses no stones whatsoever. Her skills are not set up. The only one is decreased damage, and she has over a thousand reflex. Sadly, the amount of reflex will go back a little bit down when they hit level 60. But I just want to point out, she has a huge amount of reflex by base. So this is something that people really want to look at. So we're going to be maxing her based on that. And her passives are going to be highly complementary to that reflex value. So on top of it, if I put her here, 1,274 reflex for a player that doesn't even possess a single stone. That's insane. And if any of you think it's because I have a special ace, she's not placed in the team. So it's not affecting. And even if it did, my ace is meta. And the meta's ace affects attack power and hype of light and dark. So in no way will it affect a reflex stat. So she has gotten an E re recently. And I'm planning to get it. The only thing is that currently the minion match, this one, and on top of it, the following one, are going to be minion matches that give GP. So those are the best ones to farm. So since I'm usually going to do a very nice stream where I'm going to spend a lot of GP and a lot of gold, I've accumulated over 6,000 gold already. There's going to be something really nice later on in the in a stream. But until then, it's going to take a while before I can start farming elementals and involving everyone. As you've seen in a lot of my videos, I can't actually involve people currently. So yes, I, I do have the rainbows. That's not the problem. So I'm just gonna look at her skills on this point because we just want to know what her EE skills are. Uh, for the active, it's gonna be a steal that is gonna increase reflect and recover action bar. So one thing that's gonna be nice with her is that on attack, She's going to have a huge recover action bar. Not only this, but another skill is also going to uh, activate on that. So if she uses her steel, it's first going to use the fact she has huge reflex. And it's going to recover her action bar. So just in case you failed, she can try in the next few seconds. Now this is going to cap out at a pretty interesting value. As you can see, uh, it goes up around 7.5%. So that means it's going to be able to pass the cap of the 50%, who's actually really great and completely outranks players such as Milky Way. But again, this is an active, so it's something that you need to take with a grain of salt because it can only be used once every 15 minutes. Now our second skill. So the sad thing is the first half of it, decreased damage received from Dark and Thunder Player. So the Dark part... Let's be honest, if you're running here, you're forced to have a mono light backline. If you have a mono light backline, I can't imagine why, for whatever reason, you'd actually be scared of a dark striker. I know some are good, but I don't know a single good PvP striker that has the dark element. And even in PvE, just being light by base should give you a pretty decent advantage on dark strikers. Now the Thunder part on the opposite is really great for PvP and PvE because in PvP there's going to be that good old Leviator or the Mono Thunder teams and in PvE, well, they're going to be throwing at some point something Thunder. You know it's going to happen. So at least like this, there's a low chance it's going to one-hit you. Well, I don't think it's going to one-hit you depending on how you build your line, but it's still going to hit you hard. Plus, when you're trying to penetrate or steal back from these guys, it can never hurt to be more resistant. Now, her third skill, who has been added in one of the recent patches, who has caused a lot of players to be angry, some less angry. I'm going to say it depends what color of light backline you're running. So this is a mono light line buff, who's going to increase action speed and reflex 
by 30%. So this is a really good value combined, especially with her active um, and her base reflex. And on top of it, it's just an overall good back value because giving some action speed to the back is something that a lot of the time you need to sacrifice stone slots for. And here it's going to be giving you that on a line level and it's going to give you reflex, allowing a much higher chance that you're going to be able to pull off an action before the enemy front line. Especially since nowadays you're going to be seeing some Milky Way, some aliens. So now speed has become something a little bit more important to either side of the line. And of course the reflex, well, just like this, you can steal. So she compliments, of course, anyone who needs to act fast and anyone who tries to have high reflex values. But of course, she has high reflex values, so she can be your dedicated stealer. There's nothing wrong with that. And our last skill that is going to be directly linked to her first skill is uh, Parasensory 2. It's the name is maybe not the most important thing here, but what's nice to know is Recover Action Bar in Spirit um, by 8%. So 8% at level 1 usually means that at level 5, it's going to be 40%. So the Spirit part is a nice bonus, meaning that whenever she's going to attack, it's basically going to pay off her active directly. So it's like she has a free active. And the second thing is, let's start doing the math. This makes a 40%, who's really great. Then here we got a base 30 and we got a 7.5 increase that's going to happen five times, who makes around 37.5. So if you're starting to add this up, it's going to basically mean she's going to be acting two times whenever she uses her active. So it's extremely high. It's basically above the level of 100% action bar. So on two skills, she's basically created her own super play. So this is why maxing out her active and maxing out her last passive can be very powerful. Now, sadly, that is not the ideal build for a backline player. So you do want her to use that active as it's just great. So you're gonna be sadly sacrificing some point in Parasensory 2. So since you're gonna be sacrificing some points, she's gonna be losing um, around 15% of that action bar. So if we, if we look at it once again, on a mathematical level, that means it's going to be 30% plus 7.5 times 5, who's under 37%. So she's at 67.5. And here, we're only going to do it three times. So it's going to be plus another 24. So 67.5. Um, wait one sec. I'm just doing the math as we speak. 67.5. Um plus wait now now i actually got mixed up who's who's kind of sad uh 8 16 24 plus 24 giving you a 91.5 action bar recovery now that is a huge value but a lot of us are going to say well it's very nice but you've just broken the idea of super play who i really liked so for all of you guys i'm going to tell you there is going to be a solution for that we're going to look at her stones because I'm sure a lot of us know that as a light player, there's something called Metatron's Will, and there's also something called Thunder Penetrate. There's also another bunch of stones who can complement that, but those are the two most common ones. Um, now, to look at her on a stone level, um, you're going to see that she's going to have a very nice stone setup. So the very cool part about it is you can decide which kind of reflex stone you prefer. Unlike most builds, when you're going to be limited to only one of those two colors. So, first of all, she is a stealer. She has high reflex. Whatever happens, she needs two reflex stones. That is not an option. You need that reflex. So, you know the prime slot is going to be either light reflex, depending on your spirit generation. I'm personally going to say it's not worth wasting points on that. And I'm going to put a Nandor reflex in there. Um, now, for the stones, there's more than one build, but irrelevant of the build, one of these two is going to be a reflex, 
and this is going to be some sort of speed related stone. So when we're looking at this, I'm going to go to the stones to explain this on a better level, but I just want to point out again that our colors are light, and or and worm wind, and then one prime slot. So when we go to the colors, so the reason why I was saying that maybe it makes more sense to get the Andor is because that one is Critical Resistance, who in my eyes is better than Spirit. But that is because she generates more spirits than the passive resist of this stone is ever going to generate. So she's already generating it. If you need some high actives in your team, you may put that one in the prime slot instead of this one. But this one just is a little bit more of a reassurance that you're not going to be KO'd when trying to steal. So again, you're going to be putting two reflex. So now stone-wise, you have the Wormwind slot. So the Wormwind slot has basically two options. Um, I would say you could be pointing at this one. Action speed, critical resistance is pretty nice. Or you could be looking at a steal. Like this, it, it recovers the, um, of the inflicted damage of a seal. It's going to be healing you and, well, just going to higher your chance of getting the ball. But if you want to look at it on a unique stone, the only one ever worth anything is going to be this one. Increasing your action speed even more and recovering action bar even more, really maxing out and making something that is going to be ridiculously powerful and able to steal constantly. So this is one of the builds that could be very nice. It would be throwing an Ancient Stormer, uh, throwing um, two Andor Stones, and putting in the light category, this is where there's a little bit more of a question. Um, I would say mainly what could be really nice would be either a Taro Stone, because that's going to be able to give her a little bit of a heal. But if you don't like that, you can also go for a Dribble Stone, um, it's maybe less recommended. I would more go for the Tyro Stone. So again, on the light aspect, when you do that, there's a little bit of a problem. And if instead you put the light reflex, when you look at Andor, I would be looking at the Andor Dribble Stone, maybe throwing a damage decrease. But again, those don't make any sense. So when you do this, one of the two slots is not going to be ideal. Um, then you're going to be doing this. So if instead you decide to go in the Andor section for your unique stone, you can decide to really max out the fact that she's a buffer. So if you're gonna be doing that, this build maybe makes more sense. There are two more, but this is in the Andor unique. The only cool one is gonna be Endless Burning Matter. I would not get Ignition Catalyst, it's a one-time deal. But again, it's it's not worth it because the, the action bar for active requires that she can use an active. So not really the best idea. So you could throw a uh, Nedless Burning Matter if you don't have one in your line. But since she highly complements a Virgil, there's a low chance that she's going to be the one holding it. Because you're going be to want to max out other stats. In that case, the build would be extremely simple. It would usually be, because then this is not a unique increasing speed. You're going to want to put a green speed. You're going to want to put a light reflex and a red reflex in the prime slot. And now uh, these are the two stones, so I'm going to say it's really up to you. You can decide that you want a Thousand's Watcher. That is an option. I'm not going to say it's the best one because it's one attack that can give you a really high reflex. So if you want to make some sort of godly reflex, it's an idea. I wouldn't say it's the best. On passive, you can get that extra reflex. Now, the viable version would be throwing a Metatron's Will. Now, if for any reason you have something that can buff critical damage or anything else, you could throw this in. Now, I would say that this is the, um, the best build for her. Because if you throw a Metatron's Will, this is the one with the highest action bar recovery uh, on attack. It's going to increase crit rate. Giving her damage was not something that she has by base. So it's going to really complement on that aspect. You're going to throw a Nandor Reflex. So you're just going to have the other two Andor Reflex, so really high critical resistance. And then if you want, and again, this is again up to you, you can either go for a green speed, but now that you got that insane crit, you could even go for a crit damage. So I would say throwing a Metatron's Will is the best stone for her. 
but this is again a personal choice and it's based on your back line. So I'm just gonna go back to her to show her chains. So chain wise, I would say she does have some really great chains. Uh, the sad part about her affection chain is that it's linked to a rival who hasn't been out for quite a while. So if you don't have it, it's gonna be a bit frustrating because I know Sammy is very popular. She's a good center mid if you don't have a legend. And even if you do, it still doesn't change. She can be a pretty good player in the mid line. Um, then you have the best one. Of course, it does require owning him, is having a Duke. So we all know that if you have Duke, he will be on the team. So it's just good to have her there. Uh, her nemesis chain is more something for PvP. I mean, PvE. You're not going to find this in PvP. I might be one of the rare players who even uses Lilith in PvP. So the chances of meeting it are incredibly low. And this chain is basically a joke. It's a friendship chain. No one's above four star. I'm not even sure if they're above three star. So I don't remember exactly all of the Wormwind three, four stars. Again, no one does. It's not relevant. So skin wise, I personally find her went a little bit too far, but it's going on uh, kind of the Nekomimi idea that they were introducing in the second. She has no special skins. So now, what kind of line do you want with her? So again, as I pointed out, what's extremely important to note is that this buff is only gonna affect light players within position. So what you need for this is a mono light backline. And when we mean mono light backline, the goalkeeper automatically becomes Isilla. And on the right side, you're gonna automatically find a Virgil. So it's basically going to be something like Virgil, Isilla, Chitose, uh, and here you're going to put some other buffer. Uh, you can try a four-man line that's pretty interesting with her, especially if it's light. Um, another bunch of good players you can throw with her are going to be, for example, um, uh, da -da -da, Mikael, who I am trying to look for just to point him out because I don't have him in the list. Uh, yes, and that's when you try to find him and you can't here. For example, Mikael could be put in the, the, the right back. Again, that just means put Virgil in center or somewhere else. Um, Anael, if you really feel like it, I don't think she's the best idea for a back line, but if for some reason you feel like it, uh, a new EE has been made that could work really well in the back line being Mario. So something like Mario, Chitose, Virgil, and a Michael... Uh, around there could be really great as a backline. Uh, there are a few backline players, but I would say those are the ones you're going to be mostly looking at when you're running this team. So I hope this is how people understand why Chitose is actually pretty nice and has that insane action bar who no one ever really seems to be mentioning, outranking by far Milky Way. Um, and also an insane base reflex. So I hope that this is how people see the value of Chitose. Um, as she's a new player, a lot of people are getting her, they're not seeing any guides on her, and they're automatically dissing her as a player who's just not worth it because you don't see her. So again, Monolite, great reflex, great action bar, if well set up, can be extremely powerful. Um, I hope this answers any question you have. If you have any more, just write me down a comment, uh, message me. I'm also on the forums. And if you have any requests, just tell me and I'll make a short video on this. On average, you're around 20 minutes. Have a good day.